Hello class, and welcome to 5.5 Collisions in Two Dimensions, Glancing Collisions. So this is the last topic in the chapter, the last topic in the unit, and we're finally looking at two-dimensional collisions. So this is exciting. Our first topic here is components of momentum. Now if we're dealing with two dimensions, we need to look at the x and y components. And the cool thing here is that we can consider the x and y impulse independently. Independently. That's a y there. Independently. So um, we have our equations for impulse, and I'll just make our um, x and y components now. So we have this is equal to the sum of the x forces times the change in time. And we can also break this into, well, PI1x plus PI2x. This is going to equal the P1fx plus the P2fx. So those are our y components. We can do the exact same thing with the y. Um, so those are the x. We can do the exact same thing for the y components. There we go. So we have the y and the x. This is a, a y here. Good. Okay, so we can look at the x and y separately. That's useful. Um, and the type of problems we're going to look at are glancing collisions. So this is a collision where the first object after impact after impact travels at an angle it travels at an angle from its original direction so after the collision it's going to go off in a slightly different direction. Those are the sorts of uh, impacts that we're looking at, glancing collisions. We have two problems here, so we'll just get right into them. The first one says, in a game of curling, a collision occurs between two stones of equal mass. The object stone is initially at rest, so this is the one that's sitting there on the field. After the collision, the stone that is thrown has a speed of 0.56 meters per second at an angle of theta, and the object stone has a velocity of 0.42 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees from the original direction of motion. We want to determine the initial velocity of the thrown stone. So we have on the right here a picture of what's happening. They hit each other. They go off in different directions. Okay. Well, to solve this, we're going to look at the y component first, because in the initial phase, there's no y momentum, okay? And we know that momentum is conserved here, so we have p, the total y momentum at the start, is equal to the total, uh, whoops, the total y momentum at the end, which is equal to zero. There's no momentum here. So if I look at the total y uh, momentum here, so this total y here, this is equal to um, M, uh, let's see, we have M V F 1 sine theta. Okay, so this is our first object going upwards. We'll call that positive. And then minus M V F 2 sine phi. This is our other object going downwards. And you can see on the picture to the right here, I'll just drop our components here so you can see that we're using sine theta and sine phi for the y components. Okay, so this is good. Notice I used the same mass for both because they, they have equal mass. So we can set this equal to zero. Beautiful. So that means then I can say m v f 1 sine theta is equal to m v f 2 sine phi. And I can cross out some masses there. And let's see, if I want to solve just for theta, can say theta is equal to the sine inverse 
of, and we can get VF2 sine phi over VF1. Good. Now, if we plug in some numbers here, we have VF2, this is 0 0.42. Oh, I guess I, I need to keep our sine inverse on the front here. Sine inverse of VF2 was 0 0.42. Sine 30 degrees. Divide this by our VF1, which is 0 0.56 meters per second. Okay, and this gives us a theta angle of 22.0 degrees. Good. So that's our angle, and that's going to be useful now to figure out the x components here. So now we can move on to the x momentum. So PTIX, the initial I momentum, is equal to the final um, X momentum. Good. So um, we can write this out here. We have M1 VI1X plus M2 VI2X is equal to M... Oh, I don't really need the M1 and M2. They're the same mass. But anyway, MV... Um, F one X plus M V F two X. Okay, again we've got mass times everything here. We can just cross those masses out. It's all the same mass. Alright, so um, if we want to find now V one I X, V I one X, V I one X, I'll isolate this. So it's going to be um, V F 1x plus vf2x and I would subtract vi2x but we know that the, the second object starts at 0. So this is really it. That's all we need to do. Um, so here we have vf1x is vf1 cos theta plus vf2 cosine phi and this gives us 0 0.56 cosine 22 degrees plus 0 0.42 cosine 30 degrees and that gives us a final of 0 0.88 meters per second to the right. Okay, so that tells us how fast it was initially going and that's just our x component but there was no y component so that's our final, um, not our final, but that's our final answer for the initial speed. Okay, I hope you followed that. Great. So one other problem here, inelastic glancing colli collision. So this is an inelastic collision. These two skiers are going to end up moving together at the end. So it says two cross-country skiers collide at a right angle, locking their skis together. Skier 1 has a mass of 84 kilograms and was traveling east, and skier 2 has a mass of 72 kilograms and was traveling north. They're both traveling with an initial speed of 5.1 meters per second. We want to calculate their final velocity. Okay, remember, they're moving together at the end, so the VF is going to be the same. So we can use our same statement here that the total final momentum is equal to the total initial momentum. Good. Now, our initial momentum, this was equal to the momentum of skier 1 plus the momentum of skier 2. And these are now vectors. They're in different directions, so we're going to have to sort of watch ourselves as we do this. So let's find our, our first momentum, P1. This was equal to m1 vi1. Okay, so we get 84 times 5.1. Remembering to, we're going to use our direction in a second. So this gives us 428 kilogram meters per second in the east direction. Okay, and we'll do our momentum two. This is m2 vi2 and that is equal to 72 times 5.1. They have the same speed. This gives us 367 kilogram meters per second in the north direction. Okay, so we have their two momentums. This is going to let us find our initial momentum, which is equal to our final momentum. So this is really, it's, it's the momentum that we have to work with. So I'll draw a picture here. We have the x piece, we have 
the, um, let's see, so that was the X piece, this is the Y piece here, and the total is going to look something like this, with our some angle theta, and this is our total momentum. Good, this was 367, this is 428, and I can find now my momentum. So first I'll find the magnitude, just using Pythagoras. So we've got 367 squared plus 428 squared. This gives us um, 564 kilogram meters per second. And our angle here is the tan inverse of 367 over 428. And that gives us an angle of 41 degrees. Okay, so we're nearly there. Our question was, what is their final speed, their combined final speed? Well, we know that the final momentum is going to equal, um, okay, it's going to equal m1 plus m2 times their final speed. And we can just rearrange that to find the final speed. So we have pf over m1 plus m2. We have our pf, this was 564 divided by m1 plus m2, so 84 plus 72, and it gives us 3.6 meters per second, and our angle, our, our direction that we had from above, it was east, 41 degrees north. There's our final answer, the final problem of the unit. Congratulations, guys, you made it. Um, good luck with the homework.